Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to use color lookup tables in Photoshop CS6 and Photoshop CC for editing your photos. In this video tutorial, we're going to look at color lookup tables in Photoshop. This is a tool that was new in Photoshop CS6 and is now in Photoshop CC and CC 2014. These color lookup tables you can apply to an image using an adjustment layer. So I have an adjustment layer in this image and this is the color lookup table. And we're going to see what color lookup tables are and how we would apply them and use them with our images. To get started with color lookup tables in Photoshop, we're just going to add an adjustment layer to this image. And you can do that using layer and then new adjustment layer and choose color lookup. This adds a new color lookup layer to the image and here are the color lookup options. I'm going to select one of these and just click on it. So I'm going to go for the crisp winter look and now I can arrow through the list. Now the reason why I do this using the arrow key rather than selecting the options first up is that some of these, when I just go and select them, actually turn the image black. So if I go here, for example, and choose the bleach bypass look from the list, sometimes it has the tendency to make the image black. But if I select it using the down arrow key, I have less problems with this selection. And other users have reported similar results. But you can go through these color lookup tables and just apply them to the image by selecting the color lookup table that you want to use. Color lookup tables come from the film industry and this is the first time that they've appeared in Photoshop. And what they are is basically a way of remapping the colors in your image. Now the color lookup colors that you're remapping to are preset in these color lookup tables, so you can't alter them. You can, however, blend them. So if we go and find a color lookup that we like, I'm going to go down to the bottom here to probably the teal orange one. Now we can blend that into the image. So for example, I could go to the blend modes and I could select a blend mode such as overlay and that's going to affect how that color lookup table effect is actually blended with the underlying image. But we can't actually change the colors in the color lookup table, change the mapping per se. Now there are other options, there are some abstracts. So for example, here we have a turquoise sepia one and these are some color ones, sienna blue. I'm just going to run back up the list here, gold crimson, gold blue, cobalt carmine. And then there's some device link options. Now the list here on a Windows machine is much less than what you have on the Mac. There are some additional device link options available if you're using Photoshop on the Mac. Here's teal, magenta, gold and smoky, red, blue, yellow, color negative and this is an anime palette. So you have all the options here that are built into Photoshop CS6 and Photoshop CC and you just apply them using the adjustment layer. You can blend it in using blend modes. You can adjust the opacity. And of course, like every adjustment layer, you have a mask that will allow you to paint on the effect into certain areas of the image if desired. Now you can boast a number of color lookup table options that you have if you have access to the Creative Cloud because there's a tool in the Creative Cloud called SpeedGrade that gives you access to more of these color lookup tables. So I'm just going to open up my Creative Cloud dialog here and you'll see here that I've installed SpeedGrade CS6. Even though I'm using Photoshop CC, it doesn't matter. I could install SpeedGrade CS6 or CC, it doesn't really matter. Now, if I go to the SpeedGrade folder on my disk, I'm just going to open it up here. You'll find that inside your program files, Adobe, Adobe SpeedGrade, it would be CS6 or CC, there are some look examples and here they are here. And these are the lookup tables. So what you'll do is open the dialog here and all you want is the .lwk files. The JPG ones are just that, they're just JPEG images, but the 
look files are the ones that actually contain the lookup table information. So you've got them grouped here by cinematic, desaturation, style and temperature. So what I did was I picked up all those .lwok files and I took them and put them inside my Photoshop collection so they would be accessible in Photoshop and to make them easier for me to be able to identify when I'm doing videos like this I named them a little bit differently. So let's just go into Adobe and let's go to Photoshop CC because that's what we're using here and we'll go into presets and then we're going into 3D LUTs and when I open this up you'll see that I have more lookup tables in here than you will have because all these SG ones are the ones that have come across from speed grade so I've just renamed them SG to make them easier to identify but you don't actually have to rename them because you'll just be able to access them so once you've copied the lookup files into your Adobe folder just close and restart Photoshop and then you'll get access to the additional color lookup tables that you've just added to Photoshop. For example, let's choose the duo toning look. And then I can just use the up arrow key and the down arrow key to run through the speed grade additional color tables that I've now been able to add to my Photoshop collection just to give me a wider range of color tables to use. Now if you are interested in creating your own color lookup tables that is possible and you can do it using speed grade but that's well beyond the scope of this particular video tutorial. What we're looking at in this tutorial however is how to use the color lookup tables that come bundled with Photoshop CS6 and Photoshop CC and also those that you can grab from the speed grade installation to boost that collection. You apply them to an image using a adjustment layer and then of course you have all the tools that you're used to using with adjustment layers in Photoshop for blending and masking the effects. I'm Helen Bradley, thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more of my video tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released and visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.